Let's make the Duncan Hines perfectly moist fudge marble cake. We're going to use the cake mix, but we're going to do some swaps to make it moist and taste like a bakery made it. The back of the box asks for one cup of water. First swap or hack is going to be one cup of milk and it's at room temperature. And I use 2% milk because that's the milk we use, but whole milk will work. Three large eggs, but instead of that, we're going to swap out and use six large eggs. Here's first three. And here's four, five, and six. It also asks for half a cup of vegetable oil. We're going to swap that out with melted butter. I'm going to get it off the stove. And I use unsalted butter. And whenever you swap out melted butter for oil in your cake mixes, make sure the melted butter is times two the amount requested of the oil. So instead of half a cup, it's a cup, which is two sticks of melted unsalted butter. I'm also going to add this white chocolate pudding mix. It's the 3.4 ounce box. There's the chocolate Hershey's chocolate frosting. And then I'm also going to use the coconut pecan frosting. I'm going to add about a cap full of creme bouquet. And I forgot my vanilla flavor, so I had to go to the cabinet and get that. I love the vanilla flavor from Costco. This is what it is. It's about $17 a bottle. And this is pure vanilla. It's not an imitation. So let's go ahead and dump the mix, the cake mix itself, into the KA stand mixer. This is a five quart KA mixer. And KA stands for KitchenAid. Now we're going to add the pudding mix. I'm going to show you the box because I had it upside down before. But this is white chocolate and it's the instant kind. You don't want to use chocolate because the vanilla part of your cake will actually turn chocolate in color. Here goes that cup of milk. I like to get everything out of there as much as I can. That's why I'm using a spatula to try to scrape it out. Now I'm going to use the vanilla extract. Be sure to shake up your ingredients like your liquids and any kind of spices that you use in any of your baking or cooking period to make sure everything is redistributed in the container because sometimes things will settle. Again, trying to get everything out of there. Now let's start cracking the eggs. Here's the first one. And I'm going to crack them in the container, um, well, I am eventually, in the container I used the milk in. See, I forgot and I was like, yeah, here we go, let me crack it in there. That way if you have a bad egg, you won't crack it right into your batter. That's number two, and now I'm going to speed it up. That was my oven telling me it's preheated. It's three. Four eggs going in. Five. And this is number six. Going into the batter. Now I like to mix my ingredients up a little bit in the batter before I turn the mixer on because I found if I turn the mixer on right now without mixing it up a little bit or pre-mixing it up a little bit some of the powder of the batter will fly everywhere and make a mess and plus I want to make sure I break up the eggs because you want to make sure your eggs are fully incorporated into your batter before you add that warm butter or the warm butter may cook your eggs so I've mixed it a little bit now I want to add the creme bouquet. Again, I don't measure it. It's about a cap full. And again, shake up your liquids and seasonings before you use them. 
The creme bouquet is supposed to add an enhanced flavor to make it taste even more so like a bakery cake. And now here's that cup of melted butter, which is again, two sticks of unsalted butter. Raise that up, use my spatula to get all that butter out of there. And I almost forgot, but I want to mix that up a little bit because the melted butter can splash around, make a mess too, if you turn the mixer on before trying to incorporate it a little bit. I've learned the hard way on powder flying around from your batter and liquids flying around. So I try to remember to do that whenever I'm in the kitchen baking. Tidy up a little bit with my dish towel there. And you don't want to let your batter mix too long. If you do, you'll get air bubbles and or it'll just end up with a tough dry cake. Now I want to get everything off of the attachment here because sometimes dry batter gets stuck up under the liquidy batter. And I want to make sure that everything in the bottom is getting incorporated so I'm moving the spatula around there and around the sides. You need to do that at least once, if not maybe two or three times when you're incorporating all your ingredients into your cake batter. Now while that's doing that, I gotta get my measuring cup over because this is a fudge marble. In the marble, they give you a packet inside the cake mix. Here's the packet. It's like cocoa. Um, and you take a cup of your fully mixed in or incorporated batter and you add that to this little packet of cocoa and you stir it and that makes the marble part that you'll mix into the cake. So now I'm going to take my cup measuring apparatus here and I have another bowl here. I'm sorry about the camera angle. I thought it was getting everything in there, but in the other bowl is where I poured the cocoa batter or the fudge batter dry ingredient. And I'm going to add this cup of batter to that other bowl. And now I'm stirring it up and you can see how it, it kind of looks like chocolate frosting, doesn't it? And you just want to make sure you got everything incorporated in there. And I'm using another spatula because I don't want to put the same spatula that I'm mixing this marble up with into my cake batter. Or the vanilla cake will turn chocolatey. And not just the part that I want marble, but the entire batter, which is not what we want to do. So now I use Wilton baking pans. They are non-stick, but I always use baker's joy to spray on my pans when i'm baking and people may say oh that's a lot of baker's joy no it's not I, I like it to where my pans actually become white with the baker's joy that way i'm pretty sure pretty confident that nothing will stick to them as it's baking and i will show you what the pans look like once i pop the cakes out and you will see that doing it the way i do works there's nothing worse for a baker to bake anything, brownies, pies, cakes, cookies, whatever, and it sticks to your pan. Now, this trick of doing layer cakes, I've always been scared to do that until I learned a trick from Tammy Nichols from Carla Valley Cooks, her YouTube channel. Um, she says to get a measuring cup, which is the one I used before when I made the marble, and try to use the same amount in each layer pan. So I'm going to measure it out. Here's the first cup and it's going into the first layer pan. And this way your cake layer should be about even. And I do want to make a comment. Back in the day my mom used Duncan Hine cake mixes and she used to be able to get three layer cakes out of those mixes. I don't know what went wrong as far as Duncan Hines but 
you don't get as much cake mix in there because there's no way I could have made three layer cake out of this batter. I'm just tidying up a little bit because I want to be able to have both layer pans here on the counter with me. So I've unplugged my KA, moving it out of the way. Here's my other pan. Putting the first cup in here. And it ended up being about two and a fourth to almost two and a half cups of batter in each layer pan. And again, there's no way I could have made a three layer cake out of this batter. And I'm shaking it around to make sure the batter is evenly distributed in the pan. I did that with both pans. And tap it a little bit on the counter, get any air bubbles out. Now we need to add the fudge marble part. Now I eyeballed this and trying to get it evenly distributed between the two layers. I didn't want to uh, use the measuring cup again. I just eyeballed it. There's the first one. And I just took a plastic knife. I'm going to swirl it around a little bit. This is the first time I made this fudge marble cake as a layer cake. I usually do it as a bunt cake. But I said, why not try it this way? And I wanted to do something a little different. And I'm sorry for the camera angle here, but my Sony camera ran out of battery. So now I'm on my cell phone and I'm holding my cell phone with one hand and I'm doing the marbling with the other. You don't have to make anything exact. You just swirl it around a little bit, shaking the pans a little bit, tapping them on the counter. Make sure no air bubbles were put in there for me doing the marbling. Now I'm going to take it over to the oven. The oven has been preheated to 350. Let's go get the other pan. And when I bake cakes, I do put them on a cookie sheet um, when I'm baking in case it overflows. And I just wanted to check the time. And it says 21 to 26 minutes for layer cakes. Of course, that little cookie sheet won't work. I use that one when I'm making bunt cakes. This is a, it's called a jelly roll pan, but um, I use it as a cookie sheet. And I have two of them. I'm going to separate them. I should have separated it before I... Um, set the cake pans in there because I'm doing this one handed. Gotta open the stove or oven rather. Now I'm gonna put in the cake pans. There they are in the oven. I'm gonna straighten it up a little bit. Now I'm gonna set my timer for 26 minutes and it did take 26 minutes for these cakes to bake at 350 degrees but of course your oven may be different everybody's oven is different and you know we live in different altitudes here's one cake pan very little stuff to the pan and here's the other even less stuff to that pan so again the baker's joy worked here's one of the layers and there's the other Now I'm going to assemble the layer cake and sorry for the angle because what I did is I used that coconut pecan frosting and I put that on my cake pan then I put the first layer on it and then I put the coconut frosting coconut pecan frosting on the top of that layer added the second layer of the cake and then I melted the chocolate frosting in the microwave poured it all over and I did poke holes in it before I poured the chocolate frosting you can see the holes there and this is the finished product it doesn't look too bad okay here's the cake and the cake keeper I'm gonna open it up sample a piece of it 
just using plastic butter knife. And you can see the frosting has that on the cake. Still soft, but it's not as liquidy as it was when I poured the frosting on the cake. I'm going to pop out that first piece. Frosting is so soft. And you can see the marbling. In the middle, you see the coconut pecan frosting. And the fork. Again, there's the marbling and there's that coconut pecan frosting in the middle. Right there. And the marbling is a swirling we did in each layer. Moist cake. Here I am getting ready to sample it. Oh, it's so good. I had to go in for another piece right away to make sure it tasted as good as I thought it did. Yeah, really good. Really, really good. Thumbs up on that. Two thumbs up, actually. And this is day three. It's almost half gone. And you can see the marbling really well there. See that middle part where the coconut pecan frosting is? It's also on top of the cake, but you can't see it because the chocolate frosting's on it. And you can see where the chocolate frosting has set. This cake tastes like a cross between a fudge marble cake and a German chocolate cake due to the coconut pecan frosting. But it is really good and it's a winner. And you should make it. I hope you try it. And if you like it, leave a comment and let us know. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.